Hello. <clears throat> Hello. I want to talk about a quantum mechanics theory called time reversal symmetry. I also want to touch upon quantum entanglement as well. I'm going to start with a double slit experiment and I'm just going to get into some very basic basics about it. There's already a lot of great information on the double slit experiment online. Just do a search and, and you can find a lot of great websites and videos that go into some wonderful detail about it. But suffice it to say, is an experiment that was designed to demonstrate the way particles can act like the particle itself or behave as a wave based on their observation. In other words, when a particle is being observed, it behaves like a particle. And when it is not being observed, it behaves like the wave. So with this double slit experiment, the scientists had an apparatus that fired electrons through a pair of slits against the backdrop on the other side. And what they found is that when they were observing the particles, they basically behaved like, say, firing BBs through these two slits. So if you fire BBs through two slits, they'll hit the backdrop on the other side in line with the slits. And when they weren't observing, the particles acted like a wave, like a wave of water. If you were to push a wave of water through two slits, you would get two waves that come out on the other side of the slits that will spread out, intersect, and at the high points of the waves, basically create an interference pattern. So with the particles, they set up the observation both before the particles went through the slits and after to see what would happen. Of course, when they did the observation before the particles went through the slits, when observed, they, they acted like the BBs basically and created just two straight lines against the backdrop on the other side of the slits. And when they weren't being observed, they created an interference pattern against the backdrop, much like the waves of water. So when they did the observation after the slits, they were very curious to see what would happen, because then how would the particles know how to behave if they've already gone through the slits? Needless to say, the particles did the exact same thing. So how can that be, they asked. So they created a theory which is called time reversal symmetry which suggests that particles can travel backwards in time to be able to account for whether or not they're being observed, thereby acting, knowing how to act, or knowing to act like the particle versus acting like the wave. So I'm going to suggest that time reversal symmetry is not necessary. Now I know it sounds crazy because I'm just a layman. Um, I'm not a scientist. I don't have an education in these fields. Just a guy that had a near-death experience a few years ago whose mind just opened up to all kinds of crazy things. And I love to contemplate quantum theory, um, cosmology, consciousness, divinity, and all, all of those types of things. And sometimes I feel like I make some sense of things. But anyways, case in point, the reason I say that, because many physicists suggest, and I understand this shows up in the physics as well, that multiple realities and parallel universes is very much a part and inherent in our existence and it's an even inherent in the core source reality of the unified field or to me what is the source of consciousness as well and there's only one source one unified field that account for all of the multitudes of realities and universes that may exist and electrons are fundamental particles and I would suggest that there is one unified field, one source of consciousness, one set of fundamental particles that account for all of the different realities and all these different parallel universes. And I'll get into that more in other videos because there's a lot to this. But the point I'm making here is, is that that information of every probability and possibility is already in, in the particle. And it doesn't matter which arrow of time we choose to go down and we're making decisions all the time in our lives that our realities are splitting down one path or down the other and diverging you know one arrow of time with another I don't necessarily think it's all so much one and the same it can change it can shift and of course Einstein suggested that time is very malleable <laughs> so with that it doesn't matter where you observe the particles they already have that information um, to, to account for whether or not they're being observed, thereby acting like the particle versus the wave. 
you're getting into quantum entanglement, which is a theory that talks about how particles across vast expanses of space that are part of the same wave function know to change at the same time, whether it's changing momentum, changing spin, state. When one particle changes, another particle, it could be on the other side of the galaxy or even galaxies away, will change in concert with that original particle, or with its sister particle, if you will. So how do they know to do that, since supposedly nothing travels faster than the speed of light? Well, this concept of quantum entanglement was devised, and I will start with saying that entanglement of particles is not about just being through space. Particles are not entangled only through space, but they are, are, are also entangled through time as well. And I think that also ties into the idea of multiple realities and parallel universes and, and why time reversal symmetry is not necessary. And I think one ex explanation for entanglement is that particles are essentially a complex reflection of themselves. So in other words, it doesn't matter where you measure the particle, all the sister particles are essentially reflections of that measured, measured particle. And the idea that particles tend to pop in and out of existence, to me, is, a ref is a, I guess, a reflection of, of, of this idea that particles in a, in a, in a, on a quantum level, they, they shimmer. Or, or, or sort of create a sort of quantum sparkle, if you will. They're shimmering, they're moving, they're flexing, and expanding, contracting, they're you know, behaving in all kinds of ways that we certainly don't yet understand. So, with that, I'd suggest, as I say, that a time reversal symmetry is not necessary, and I, I would love it if uh, somebody out there was uh, a physicist, quantum theorist, um, would maybe explore this and see how this looks in the, with respect to, to the physics, because unfortunately I'm not able to do that. But no matter, um, just throwing some, some ideas out there, just wanted to share, and hopefully this is just some, some food for thought, if nothing else. So thank you for taking the time to watch the video. I hope all is awesome. I wish you the best. Peace.